Go with me today in your Bible, so I hope you have them. We're, uh, we want to study the Word of God today. We're not here, you're not here to hear the words of man, but you're here to hear the Word of God. <clears throat> and I ask you to turn in your Bible today to the book of Luke, chapter 21. And this is a familiar text uh, for us, um, for those who study prophecy and who are watchful unto prayer as uh, you know, we look to uh, look at and we're looking for all these things that are happening in our society and uh, as it relates to the Word of God we uh, this is a familiar passage uh, but we want to rest our eyes on verse uh, 20 uh, 25 and 26 and 27 the Bible says and there shall be signs in the Sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear, and for looking after those things. See, and that's, that's something that, that, that we have to kind of go back and focus on right there. He says, men's hearts are failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth it says for the powers of of heavens ha shall be shaken verse 27 it says then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory men's hearts are failing them for fear even right now we see that <clears throat> that uh, there are many different things are happening, many different changes that are occurring in the time right now that we're seeing. Uh, it's not safe to even go out to, to the marketplace, not safe to go to the store without uh, the threat of being trampled upon uh, or an argument or a fight in sight. It's, it's becoming unsafe to, uh, to be around people who, who are even sick. These different mandates and things that are happening around us, that our world is rapidly changing. But the focus of the day, the, vo the focus of the message today is fear. Fear's impact on our physical, mental, and spiritual health. How, 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 feel, how fear can be used as a weapon against mankind. Go with me, uh, well, <clears throat> before, we, before we get back into the, to the Word of God, I want to uh, just read some things to you, just some things I've collected uh, about, about how fear impacts our health. <clears throat> First thing, it says, uh, speaks of anxiety and panic. It says that anxiety is often situation-based and is, in simple terms, often a fear of the body's reaction to a fearful event. Anxiety is a distress or uneasiness of, of the mind caused by a fear of danger or misfortune. It's a distress and an uneasiness, uh, uneasiness of the mind. Panic is a sudden overwhelming fear that produces hysterical and irrational behavior. When you go to the to the grocery store, when you go out to to wherever it is you're going, even right now, you see you see these things happening all around us. Hysterical people are becoming hysterical because they can't simply buy toilet paper. You can't buy uh, the things that you need because others are hoarding and. Uh, so it makes it impossible for you to get the things that you need. But related to this panic and anxiety, related to fear, is hysteria. When fear is used as a weapon, it makes people hysterical. And we're led to irrational behavior. This can lead to anxiety, which, is, which you find uh, people have sweaty palms or heart races, or even nausea, even an anxiety disorder. 
which can then manifest itself as panic attacks when one is in a situation that reminds them of the one that prompted their fear. Fear, it weakens the immune system. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, the body's fear response includes an upsurge of adrenaline and cortisone. Lifetime exposure to these chemicals and other related hormones can, can take a toll on the immune system, making it weaker and less able to fight off infections, viruses, and other illnesses. While fear does not directly cause you to get sick in most cases, prolonged fear does not put the body in the best position to defend itself from the germs that would like to invade it. So when fear is used as a weapon, or just general fear, our fears, when they uh, rise up and they take over, our, our immune system is weakened. So that, mean, that means that we are more susceptible to virus than disease. So is there, if, there's, if there's a virus going around in the air because you're afraid and your fear has overwhelmed you, even consumed you, you're more liable to, to catch these things that uh, the, the common cold, the flu virus, or whatever. <clears throat> Again, fear weakens our immune system and, cause, and can cause cardiovascular damage, gastrointestinal problems such as ulcers and something, this is something common, irritable bowel syndrome and also decreases fertility. It can lead to accelerated aging and even premature death. There, there is something of a benefit to fear. It sharpens the, uh, the uh, survival instincts. When one is afraid, their body carries out what is known as the, as the fight or flight response. <clears throat> When we get scared, our heart races and all our blood moves from our extremities to the core of the body so that the most vital functions can, can, can continue to be carried out as we run for our lives or fight. Currently, I mean, certainly, certain bodily functions are suppressed like the digestive system. So if if, 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 I, if I have a, a constant fear, if I'm always fearful, and we're talking about long term, then that means I'm going to continue to have, I'm going to begin to have digestive, uh, digestive problems, such as irritable bowel syndrome and other things. For some people, the sensations this cause can be just as scary as the situation itself. The sensation, these fears, when the, the, the fear of something happening when it hasn't even happened. Depression. Being scared for an extended period can lead to not only anxiety, but also depression. Near constant feelings of sadness, moodness, and fatigue. When caused by fear, depressions, uh, depression occurs most often in people who feel these sensations on a daily basis and feel that and feel they cannot do anything about it. Depression. There is it causes damage to the heart. Prepares uh, perhaps one of the most detrimental bodily effects of fear is damage to the heart and cardiovascular system. Heightened fear on a long-term basis can eventually, after months or years, lead to serious heart problems. The organ becomes overworked and stressed from the constant bombardment of stress hormones and ceases to function properly. Now you got heart damage. <laughs> there's, a, there's an impact on our confidence as well. If one is afraid most of the time, this can leave, leave them feeling less confident. People who experience 
fear regularly often begin to turn in on themselves as, they, as their self-confidence shrinks to minuscule levels. This can lead to not only missed opportunities, but also depression and anxiety. These are just a, just a few things that, uh, that are, that are, spoke, that are uh, reported about how fear impacts, impacts our body. Before we get into the word, uh, the word of God, I want to just read a couple more statements here. It says, fear can produce paleness of skin. So this is, this is some of the signs of it. Fear can, can produce paleness of skin, rapid heartbeat, and upset stomach and nervousness. <clears throat> it can cause high blood pressure or arthritis. And intense fear can even lead to blindness. This does not mean that everyone suffering from these uh, physical problems is, is a victim of fear and a lack of, of faith. But fear can be a springboard, a starting point, for many physical ailments. The physical effects of fear can be a serious and be a, <clears throat> can be serious and devastating, but it is far more serious to realize what fear can do to a spiritual condition. Fear can lead to instability and unhappiness and a lack of contentment. It is the enemy of faith. It saps spiritual vitality and it can paralyze the soul. So this is just what the, this is what the world's saying about fear. But what does, the, what does the word of God say? What does God say about fear? <clears throat> Turn with me real quick here to, to uh, the book of 2 Timothy. Book of 2 Timothy chapter 1. Book of 2 Timothy chapter 1. I want to read to you verse 7. It says, Paul, the Apostle Paul says in his second uh, epistle to Timothy, he says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God says he's not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So how do we get, how do we get to this place of fear? Again, we have to recognize that if, if fear is being used as as a weapon against us, or are these fears or are these are these fears born in us? Are these things that, that, that have come upon us that we um, we are responsible for? But as we look at the society, we we see that there are many things that are told to us, and many things that are uh, have been not have been proven uh, false. Numbers that we've been given. Become, have, have, term, have come back false. But yet, there's hysteria and there's, there's panic in the world. So what I want to do, I just want to touch on a, a couple of accounts here. In the book of Proverbs, chapter, chapter 14, verse 34, the Bible says, righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. He says, righteousness, the righteousness of Christ is what exalted the nation, is what makes a, 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 a people great. Amen. It's not the righteousness of man, it's not the word of man that, that makes, a, makes a people great, but it's the righteousness of God. Yes, sir. So what I want to do, I just want to touch on a, a, a few different accounts. <clears throat> a few different accounts here. We're going to Turn back into the, to the book of Exodus, chapter 1. Book of Exodus, chapter 1. And we understand that this is, this is the account when, right when uh, Israel, when God allowed Israel to go into bondage. But just want to point out a few things here that, that, that maybe some of us uh, might not have considered. I know when I first began to 
look at this. I didn't, I didn't really consider, I didn't look at it in this manner. More so, I just kind of ran right by it. But uh, when I began to look at this, the Lord began to show me how uh, this account, how fear was used as a weapon against uh, the people of Israel to enslave them. In the book of Exodus chapter 1, beginning in verse 7, the Bible says, <clears throat> And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed, ex waxed, waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. <clears throat> verse 8, it says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt, over Egypt which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come now, let us deal wisely with them, lest, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there, when there falleth out of any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them out so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over the taskmasters the affl to afflict them with their burdens. And, and they, built the, they built for Pharaoh the treasure, the treasure cities, Python and Ram Ramses. <clears throat> but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So they said, that as they considered Israel, it says that let's, let, let's, make, let's go on to them, let's, let's uh, take, take, take them in, lest they grow. Mm -hmm. They multiply and grow. But yet, here it is, they, can't, they, they multiply and grew anyway. Right. <laughs> All right. So let, let's, let's go back. It says, <clears throat> verse 12, he says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Egypt, the Egyptians were grieved because of the, the might and the size of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians made the, uh, made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. And their service... <clears throat> Wherein they made their made them serve was with rigor. The word uh, that word affliction it, it's it's akin to um, to it's akin to fear. It's a, it's akin to uh, to uh, uh, to labors and bondage. So, so, hold on one second. Let me get my notes here. Yeah, here, here we go. All right, it's akin to uh, to depression, in abasement, to to uh, browbeating and to deal hardly with, to force and to trouble. The word affliction. It says uh, in verse eleven. It says, therefore, did they set over them taskmaster to afflict, to depress them, to uh, to browbeat them, to to treat them harshly, mm -hmm. to force them and to trouble them. Right? right? This was this was physical and mental and spiritual. In verse eleven it says, and they built uh, for Pharaoh treasure cities, uh, Python and Ramses. This this was done to them out of fear. They 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 feared what what the Egyptians would do to them if they disobeyed. Mm -hmm. So the the work that they did was out of fear. Fear was used as a weapon. Even though there was a physical punishment, there was also a spiritual and mental punishment. As, as I read to you about, uh, about fear, it says that it, it, it makes some feel that there's nothing they can do about it. Things are hopeless. They even lose, they lose all their hope. <clears throat> Continuing, it says, uh, well, let's, let's drop down our eyes to... Uh, to verse 13, it says, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. The word rigor there 
means to, to is severe cruelty. As hard exactly as hard as they can make it, that was that was what did. So that was a that was a physical affliction, a a, a, a physical uh, bondage as well as well as a spiritual and mental. So so that's so this is their kind. So this again this is right before they right as they were going into bondage uh, in Egypt. Let's turn to. Uh, Chapter three, turn to chapter three. Now this was, this was after Moses had, had come on the scene, and, and as he he's all, he's went up into the mount to meet with God, and this is this is at uh, right in the middle of their of of, of his uh, exchange with God on the mount. Uh, let's look at let's see chapter. Chapter 3, uh, yeah, chapter 3, verse 7. Here we go. <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 7. It says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know, for I know their sorrows. Affliction and and cry and sorrows are all akin to each other, because they because the children of Israel were crying out because of because of the the uh, uh, the harshness and the cruelty they suffered in Egypt. So the, so God says, I have surely heard the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I, for I know their sorrows. In verse 8 it says, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, and un, unto the place of the, uh, of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the uh, Parasites and the hit the Hivites and the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. God was. Let me back up. So God was was witness to their physical affliction. God was witness to their mental affliction. Their lack, their, their their loss of all hope. Their surrendering to to the to the physical challenges, the things that they were that they were uh, unused to, unaccustomed to. They were they suffered beatings and uh, 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 charged to do all kind of things that again that they were not accustomed to doing. Because as they walked with the Lord, a lot a lot of these things. They didn't have to suffer with, right. but they were only they were only allowed to go into bondage because of sin, because of their disobedience to the word of God. This is a clear example that every time we step out of the of the way of God, we are, we open ourselves to affliction. We open ourselves to to uh, uh, to strife and bloodshed. We open ourselves up to all the things that, that the Satan will bring on us. So this is this is just one account. Hold on a second here. So, uh, here we go. Here we go. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> Verse 9 again, it says, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So God raised up Moses to be a deliverer of his people who were being afflicted. They were, they were suffering a physical and a spiritual and a mental bondage. 
So God sent Moses to free them from their fears. That's one account. Turn with me into uh, to the book of Numbers, chapter 21. The book of Numbers, chapter 21. Book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse, beginning at verse 4. <clears throat> now, this is, uh, so, um, so by the hand of Moses, God, he, he's got Moses leading them. So he, he, led, he brought them out of Egypt into the wilderness. So, uh, so God has, is using Moses and Aaron to lead them through the wilderness. So they, so they don't have to worry about they, long, they no longer have to worry about being forced to, to do ungodly things to, to build up the, the temple of Egypt, to build up the kingdom of Egypt. So now they're traveling to the wilderness to, uh, to a place where God will, will establish them. But they run into problems. They run into problems. In the book of Numbers, chapter 21, beginning at verse 4, it says, and they journeyed from the Mount Hor, or Sinai. They journeyed from the Mount Hor by, by the way of the Red Sea. It's interesting. This, this, was one of the, this is one of the miracles that God had, had did in their sight. All right? He, uh, as, they were coming, as they were leaving Egypt, God opened up a pathway. They, they got to the very, the very brink of their, of their faith. To the point where they they was like, what are we gonna do? We can't we we don't want to go into the sea and drown. Who's gonna save us? So God opens up the Red Sea. Moses says he <laughs> told hey look stop being fearful, and behold the salvation of God. So he he parts the so God parts the Red Sea and dries the ground. Of the Red Sea, in, in, the middle, in the middle of the sea, he parts the Red Sea and allows them to travel through the midst of the sea on dry ground. Amen. That was one of the things that in their sea, in their vision, you know, that they can see, they can attest to that this has happened. But yet, let's read about Numbers 21. And they journeyed from the Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged by the way, because of the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For, this is, for there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. God gave them that light bread. <laughs> Again, they're speaking against they're speaking against my uh, against God and Moses, right? Who parted the Red Sea that they can travel safely through. But they hate this light bread that God gave them. Verse 6, he says, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Mm. And therefore, <clears throat> therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that, uh, that, he, have, that he take the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a serpent to set upon the pole, to set upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he look upon it, shall live. Hold on a second. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back here. Let's go back. Numbers 21. Hold on a second here. Hold on. Okay. 
All right. Well, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Well, I, I'm, let me just add this point right here. They had no idea that God sent the serpents. <laughs> all they knew was they, all they knew, these, these fiery serpents, these poisonous, ser poisonous serpents were coming upon them into the area that they were, and they were, being, they were being bitten by these serpents and dying. But they had no idea that God allowed the serpents to come. All, 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 they, would, all they did was, he says, says uh, in verse, verse 7, he says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. Now they realize that there was a problem. Now they realize that because of their sin, because of their murmuring and complaining against God, now they realize that they sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that, we take, that, that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Verse 9, it says, And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent... If a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the, the serpent of brass, he lived. So what's the connection? We are in this pandemic, this crisis, this, this little time of crisis. And all these things are, are happening. People are out of work. Uh, people are going hungry. There are, there are places around, around this country and around the world that are protesting. There, there's an there's a unrest that's growing. People are protesting and all these different things. Soon, it's going to get to the point where people are going to start looting. More serious crimes are going to be committed. So again, what's the connection? These serpents in this account here represent all these things that are happening to us. As long as the people of God the people of God stay with God and obey his word, God will put his, he will keep his hedge of protection around us. But when we step out of his will, he removes his hedge of protection and then here comes the serpents. <laughs> I want to I read to you, read to you a, a quote here. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you a call here. <clears throat> it says, the plan of salvation, the plan, the, pl the plan for the salvation of lost mankind is based upon a man's acceptance by faith alone of Christ's sub substitutionary death. It was taught in the wilderness as it was taught, <laughs> it was taught in the wilderness as the brazen serpent was elevated by Moses. And the people with the venom of the poisonous serpents in their veins were restored by looking in faith at the saving symbol. Again and again, we are taught that salvation is by grace through faith, mm -hmm. not by fear. It says, <clears throat> while true faith... Tr while true faith trusts wholly in Christ for salvation, it will lead to perfect conformity to the, law, to the law of God. Faith is manifested by works. That's from the Review on Herald, uh, October 5, 1886. It says, and the people spake against God. This is, this is replaying the account. And the people uh, spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore, wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt in, uh, to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. This was, a, this was because of their murmuring and complaining. They, they weren't satisfied with what God was doing for them. They had turned from the word of God and turned into their own way. 
And that's, and that's the problem with many of us is that we don't understand that when we turn out of the will of God, we subject ourselves to harsher treatments by the enemy. We subject ourselves to, to be fall into fear and to be controlled by it. We allow ourselves to be, we allow, uh, we open ourselves to this, to, this, uh, to this use of fear as a weapon against the people of God yes. when we turn out of the way. It says, <clears throat> and much people of Israel died. And then it said, we have sinned for the, for, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. It's only when, when, uh, when, when people uh, have, have, have fallen and have subjected themselves to sin, when people get in trouble, then they realize their error. They refuse to, 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 to yield to the pleadings, to the drawing force of God to, to keep them from falling. But it's when, it's when we get into trouble, then we want to pray. Then we want to call on God. Then we want to obey. Then we want to have Bible study. Well, the whole time he was just, he just wanted you to trust him. He just wants you to get to know him. Continuing, it says, <clears throat> again, it says, and Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said unto Moses, uh, again, well, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says, it says, uh, goes back to repeating, it says that, that, that Moses, that God told him to, to, to form a, 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 a serpent out of brass and place it on this pole and look up, and anyone who looks to the serpent shall live. If he's bitten of a, of a serpent on the ground, but if he's looking up at the pole, he shall live. This, this, this pole, this brazen serpent upon this pole was a representative of Jesus who would come to die for man's sin. It was, it was a symbol of the coming Messiah who would come for the salvation of mankind, who would sacrifice his life that you may live. It says, the murmurings of the children of Israel were unreasonable, and the unreasonable always go to extremes. They uttered, fa they uttered falsehoods, <clears throat> in saying that they had no bread or water when, when God had provided these things for them. They didn't want what God had for them. They wanted what the world had for them. The problem was is that, that they were delivered out of, that, that they were delivered out of, when they deli were delivered out of Egypt, they came out in the physical sense, but they never came out in the spiritual. They still, their heart was still connected to those things that they were, that they had grown accustomed to, that they were, uh, were comfortable with. They came out in the physical sense, in the, in the body, but they never came out in their mind. They uttered falsehoods in saying that they had no bread or water. They had both given, they had, they had both given them a mir by a miracle of God's grace. They were both, they were given them both by a miracle of God's mercy, I'm sorry, to punish them for their ingratitude and complaining against God. The Lord permitted fiery serpents to bite them. The Hebrews in their afflictions could not save themselves from the effect of the fiery serpents. They were only saved by the grace of God. In this account, there, this is the plan, in this account encompasses the plan of salvation. When, when we, when we live, live our lives according to our own rules and our own ways, or at least we think we do. When we lead our lives and the, and the grace of God comes and, says, and, and, and shows us our sin, and, and shows us a better way, and shows us uh, uh, happiness over distress, happiness over fear. This land of milk and honey over uh, uh, harsh and, and uh, harsh treatment and strife, and then we then we reject it because it's not what we're accustomed to. 
It's not what we're used to. We can't, we can't see what you're talking about. We can't see it. We can't touch it. It says, the Hebrews in their afflictions could not save themselves for the effect of, their, of the fiery serpents. They thought that they they thought that would what was presented to them was not the better way. God alone could save, God alone could save sinful, rebellious Israel by his infinite power. Yet, in his wisdom, he did not see fit to pardon their transgression without testing their repentance and faith. That's, that's just on the second account here. Remember I read to you about how, how fear is the enemy of faith. All right, hold on one second. Got, I got out of order here. Okay, here we go. All right. <clears throat> uh, so that, that's, that's another account. So let's, let's turn to uh, the book of... Uh, Proverbs with me, chapter 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Book of Proverbs, chapter 1. <clears throat> hey, Elder. Elder. Can you tell them I can, we can hear them? Okay, Proverbs chapter 1, <clears throat> beginning in verse 20. Now, when we read this, you know, people they automatically talk about, talk about wisdom. But we want to look at this thing, uh, not just about wisdom, but look at this, look at it in uh, connection to, uh, to fear and faith as well. Beginning in verse 20. Um, uh, just one, one quick note. Uh, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, it, speaks, it says, Paul says, actually, let's, let's turn there. Let's turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, real quick. Hold your finger in Proverbs, because we're coming right back. <clears throat> Paul says, Paul says in... 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and well, beginning in verse 22, it says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Verse 24, it says, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So going back to the um, book of Proverbs in chapter 1, looking at verse 20. So uh, again, so we're looking at this thing not just uh, as wisdom, but uh, as in godly wisdom. Uh, yeah, we're looking at this as godly wisdom, but also in connection to, uh, I guess, uh, it connects to faith, to fear and faith, the, the, the difference, the, the struggle back and forth between fear and faith. In verse 20, it says, <clears throat> Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth <clears throat> in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones? Will ye love simplicity? The scorn, and the scorners delight, their, delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Verse 23, it says, Turn you un, at my reproof. Right? This is, this, is the, this is the wisdom of God. It says, Turn you at my reproof. Right. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye have refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at not all my counsel. 
and would none of my reproof. And I also, watch this, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will laugh at your destruction. Why? Because you've allowed, you, 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 you allowed destruction to come to you Amen. because you've turned away from the word of God. You've, cur- you've turned away from the word, from the pathway that God has set before you. You refuse the bread and the water that he has provided for you. You've turned into the world. You've turned into the way of the heathen to, to do the way, to, to enter into the way of the heathen. You've subjected yourself to destruction. The Bible says that, O oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. Verse, 20, verse 26 again, he says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Stop right there. In connection with this story, this battle between fear and faith. And, we, and when we turn away from, we, we, when, as we walk in the, in the way of the Lord, as we walk according to the fear of the, fear of the Lord, there, there is, there is uh, the Bible says that, that God has given to every man a measure of faith. But it's on us as we journey as co-laborers with God that our faith is our faith increases as we enter into this work of soul saving and as we uh, have as we continue to grow in grace our faith is to increase but when we turn but when we do this turn away from God this this is when this fear cometh this is when fear is when we become it's when we become fearful all of, of the things around us we stop looking up at the brazen serpent. We stop looking up at Christ and, 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 and uh, 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 yielding ourselves to him. Now we become servants of the world. Now we become servants to sin. Verse 27, he says, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. These are related words to fear, anguish, and distress. One second here. If, if you, look up the, you look up the word uh, fear, the, the, root, the root word, uh, the, the, the word fear it means it's a it's a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil, or the apprehension or uh, terror of an impending danger. Not that not that this this danger is evil has happened, but you fear it happening. A, a, a related word is 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 dread. Uh, which is is a is to fear greatly, or to be uh, to be in extreme terror of, to be reluctant or unwilling to do. Uh, let's see here, where will, where will we leave off here? Verse twenty-eight. And then shall they call it. Watch this. Kind of going right back to it, it says, and then shall they call upon me. Now they now they they've rejected God. Now all these things, their their life, everything in their life is breaking loose. Uh, trouble is coming, destruction and desolation is coming. Uh, now they have no way out. Now they're trying to figure out what to do. Now we want to have Bible studies. Now we want to pray. Now, now we want to we want to do all these things that God is wanting us to do. Now the serpents are coming. Now they are now they're biting us. Now many of us are dying. Amen. He says, "When your fear cometh as desolation, and destruction cometh as a whirlwind, 
when all these things are breaking loose in your life and, and your life is, is, is going is turned upside down and you have no idea about what to do. Yeah. Now you want to pray. Now you want to call on the Lord. He says, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Then shall they seek me early, but, I shall not, but they shall not find me. Verse 29, he says, for that they hated knowledge. They didn't want the wisdom of God. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, which is to hate evil and, and perverseness. They would none of my counsel. This is, this is God's counsel to us. When, when we refuse to, we, we don't want to hear, we don't want to have these Bible studies. We don't want to learn, we don't want to learn the thus saith the Lord. We refuse his counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. And be filled with their own devices. Verse 32, he says, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the, pros and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. That's what happens when, when, we look in, when we're looking in the world. All the, the, the evil man, he's, he's prospering, he's doing this, he's doing that. Uh, he seems to be happy, you know. But, 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 but Jesus said that we are to deny ourselves. But... The, the evil man, the prosperous, the, the, the worldly man, he's doing all these things. He's got the big house and the nice car. He's got the fancy clothes. He seems like he's really happy. Yeah. He's got the big house, but, but God says, go into the wilderness. Go, go into country living. Oh my. Get you a modest house. Get you a modest car. Dress modestly. Verse 33 says, but whosoever heareth unto me shall dwell safely. I'm sorry. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And if you keep reading in the chapter 2, it's really a continuation of, of what Solomon is saying here. He, he, he goes into this explanation uh, between what happens with the with the man who stays with God versus the one who turns who 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 once was who once thought, who once was in the church and now goes out. Whew, okay. <clears throat> Turn me in, in your Bible to, um, like I said, yeah, because I'm not going to read the rest of that. But, but that's, that's really, it's really uh, powerful that uh, if you keep reading into chapter 2, uh, uh, Paul, uh, I'm mean, not Paul, um, King uh, Solomon uh, goes into uh, to explaining this, uh, the, the difference between uh, the good man and the evil man. Uh, but I will read this this part right here. It says, <clears throat> actually, I'm going to go into verse verse ten <clears throat> in cha uh, chapter two and verse ten. He says, he says, when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh perverse things. I'm, I'm sorry, speaketh for, forward things. <laughs> and then, and then he goes in, he, he goes into explanation again. He said, of the of the evil man. Watch this. He says, Who leave the path of uprightness, who, re, who, who, who goes from doing what's good in what was good in God's sight to the way to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and, and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and, 
and they froward in their path to delight thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flatters with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her mouth and forgetteth the covenant of, of, of her God. For her house inclineth unto death and her path unto the dead. None that go into her return again. He's talking about the, anyone who, who, who goes from following following the path that God has set for him, and go and turns into darkness. Hardly, hardly ever is there a time when any come back. Most people who do this, most people who turn into this path of darkness, come out. How, how do we go from following the path that God has set for us to, and then ha, who have tasted the good word of God and turn to darkness? The Bible says, that very, that few, very few come back. Verse 20, it says, that they may walk in the way of the good man. I'm sorry, verse 19. Again, it says, none that go unto her return again, neither, neither that they hold of the path of life. All right, this is, this is the path where God has, has set for us to walk in. But, but, but Solomon is saying that very few people come back to the path. And, and, and walking in this path, he said, that, they may, that, that thou mayest walk in the way of the good man and keep the path of, the, uh, the path of righteousness. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. But then he goes right back. He says, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressor shall be rooted out of it. So he, he, he's talking about this, this contrast between the good man and the evil man. The question is, are, we gonna, are you going to allow your fear to control you? Or, or are you going to turn unto God? Are you going to choose to look up at that serpent and be saved? Are you going to look and live according to the word of God? Turn me in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1 as we're closing. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 1. You good? 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 as we are closing. Together here, hold on. Okay, let me think. This is, yep, here we go. All right. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one. We're gonna look at. Uh, that's we're gonna begin in verse one and come come down again to verse seven. <clears throat> so again, we we we're looking at this thing uh, about fear and this impact on the health. We look at how. Uh, I mean, there, there are many different types of fear. Uh, some of them be, uh, turn into phobias. Uh, fear can be used as a weapon against us. But fear, but, but, but we have these, we have these uh, fears. Uh, we all have, individually, we all have fears of something. And, and God says that if you will turn to me and you will cast your burdens on me, if you will give this all to me, right, when he says, he says that he has come to save us from our sins, save us, save us from our afflictions, save us for the things that we fear of, that, that it's his promise that if we would do this, he will set us free from them. We will live a, we will live in a life of, of joy and, and happiness with the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul says, <clears throat> Paul, an apostle, of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with, the pure, with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee 
in my prayers day, uh, night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that I that in thee also. He was he's convinced of the faith that's in Timothy also. This same faith that was in his grandmother and his mother, he's convinced that he has that same level of faith. Verse 6, he says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. The, 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 the phrase stir up there means to, to rekindle. If you look it up in, in the Greek, in, in the Strong's Concordance in the Greek, you, you'll find that, that that phrase there means to rekindle. He says, stir up or rekindle the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of hands. Putting on of my hands, I'm sorry. Verse 7, he says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. The, the, the word fear there, it's, it means, means uh, to be timid, to, to lack uh, self-assurance and courage. Uh, and if, if you look that up, it also... Uh, gives us another reference code which, which uh, connects us to, is connected to faith, to being faithless or, or to being, uh, to, to dread and to be fearful. But he says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear, the spirit of, 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 of t uh, being timid and unassured and, and uh, being uh, uh, cowardly. But God has given, he says, Continue, he says, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The, the word power there is it, connected to the Spirit of God, to the, to the Holy Spirit. If you go to uh, Galatians chapter, uh, chapter 5, go to Galatians chapter 5. This is a, uh, familiar to us here. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5, it says, hold on one second. Galatians chapter 5, looking at, okay, come on here. All right, here we go. All right, Galatians chapter 5, hold on. Here we go. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says that some of the fruit of the Spirit, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit of, uh, the, the, the fruit of the, the Spirit of God, right, he says, Paul says in 2 Timothy, he says, I've given you the, uh, I'm not giving you a spirit, uh, a spirit of fear, but of power, power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the fruits thereof, it says it's love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. He's giving you the spirit that, 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 would, that would help you to increase your faith, that you would not be fearful, but that you would walk according to the faith that's in Christ Jesus. He says, of meekness and temperance and self-control. He says, against such, there is no law. Going back to 2 Timothy, he says, but I've given you the, not the spirit of, of fear, but I've given you the spirit of, of power, the power of the Holy Spirit to, to aid you, to equip you, to help you to understand the word of God, the power of, of love, the spirit of love that will help you that, 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 that you would enter into this work, not, not in fear, but you would enter in in love, this, this same love that Christ exhibited, that he showed us, that this love that uh, he, was, he, he showed us self-denying and self-sacrificing love. He says, I give you this, this spirit of a sound mind. This sound, this sound mind cometh by the word of God. Paul says that the God has, he's not given us this spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. You know, the Bible says in 1 first, in first John chapter 4, verse 18, it says that fear have torment. God has not given us this spirit, this spirit of fear to be tormented of our own fears and, or even the, the way fear is being used as a weapon against you. He said, but I've given you this spirit of 
the spirit of power and love and of sound mind. He's talking about this, this power. He says miraculous power. The power, the, the power to overcome every test and every trial by the grace of God. Of, 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 again, of love, this, this self-denying and self-sacrificing love. Of sound mind. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as, as from us, as they as that the day of Christ is a hand. In, second, in, in, in the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 12, the Bible says, teaching us that denying all ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, which is akin to, to having a sound mind. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, amid all the things that are happening around us. We are to live our lives according to, the, uh, according to the word of God, by the grace of God, soberly, righteously, and godly. You are to be an example to the world, even in this time of, of challenge, even in this time of test. You are to be an example to the world. Are you going to look up to the, to the brazen serpent on the pole, or are you going to be content looking at the things of the world? Oh my. Oh my, Lord. The word of God says, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening. Happy Sabbath. Uh, let, let, us, let us name with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to thank you again for your word. Thank you, Lord, for, the, for showing us ourselves, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this peace and uh, love, Lord, that you come to give us, Lord, that you, this power over every sin and over every challenge of this world, Lord, the power over, over our fears, Lord, you said that we don't have to be fearful. We have, we have nothing else to fear but, but fear itself. But yet, many of us are fearful, Lord. We, we don't know what to do or where to go or how to find peace. But there is in your word, Lord, peace and safety. You call us, Lord, to trust in your word, trust in your promise that, that you can save and you will save. Help us today, Lord, that, that we would use this time, Lord, to, to draw closer to thee. We pray, Lord, that you, as, as we draw closer to you, Lord, that you would draw closer to us. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to give us that power and that strength, Lord, that we need. Help us, Lord, today as we continue uh, during the Sabbath hours, Lord. Yes. Help us, Lord, as we go into this new week, Lord, that we will go refreshed and empowered, ready, Lord, to, to heart to hear and to do all that you called us to do. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.